Welcome to the IB Biology interactive lecture video on section 2.5, enzymes. Now if you know a bit about proteins, you have probably heard about enzymes. Most enzymes are specific types of proteins, called globular proteins, that have the ability to affect chemical reactions in the body. This is generally seen by enzymes speeding up chemical reactions, in which they take the role of a catalyst. Now, catalysts are really cool because structures that have the ability to increase the rate of a chemical reaction without being consumed or used up in the process. They do not undergo any permanent change and can therefore be used over and over again to speed up the same chemical reaction. This becomes very important for the human body because we have an insane number of reactions happening in and around our cells at any given moment. Enzymes work to support chemical reactions by having a unique three-dimensional structure. This image is showing a simplified, illustrated structure of an enzyme. Within this structure is a special location on the enzyme called an active site. The shape of an active site on an enzyme is very unique and only has the ability to interact with specific chemicals. These chemicals that can fit perfectly into the enzyme's active site and possess the correct chemical properties to bind with it are called substrates. And these substrates are the things that are undergoing a chemical reaction. So if your body is trying to break something apart, like the pieces of a macromolecule that you just ate, that specific macromolecule can be the substrate that fits perfectly into the active site on that specific enzyme, which will help support the reaction of breaking apart the chemical bonds to release products that are smaller than the original substrate. Modeling the specific complementary shapes of a substrate to an active site is often referred to as a lock and key model, as a key, like the substrate, is only designed to fit into one type of lock, the enzyme's active site. You will also hear your teacher refer to this concept as enzyme substrate specificity. For an enzyme to function, the substrate must first attach to the active site. But this process, the substrate fitting into the active site, has a degree of randomness to it because the collisions happening between the molecules in your cells are not predetermined. There's no higher order thinking happening by the molecules telling them to seek out the active site. It simply happens by chance with the enzyme and substrate randomly bumping into each other and the correct orientation to have the key fit into the lock. I mentioned before that enzymes have the ability to speed up chemical reactions, and when this happens we can refer to it as enzyme catalysis. This entire concept is explained by putting together what we already know, which is that enzymes can speed up the rate of a reaction and do so by having a substrate fit perfectly into its active site. But why does this work? What does the substrate fitting into the active site actually do? Well, to understand that, we need to talk about something called activation energy. Chemical reactions don't just happen because they want to. In order for a reacting molecule to be converted into a product, it takes a specific amount of energy. And the minimum amount of additional energy required to make a reaction happen is called the activation energy. Now, there are cases of chemical reactions that need to happen in the body that have a high activation energy. So in order to ensure the reaction takes place, the enzyme can be utilized to lower the activation energy of the reaction. The added benefit of being attached to the active site is that the molecules can be positioned properly and guided towards a different reactive pathway that will ultimately decrease the amount of activation energy needed for the chemical change to occur. The products can then detach and the enzyme is ready to encounter another substrate to support the same reaction to happen again. Now we have established that most enzymes are made out of proteins, and because that is the case, there can be some external factors that affect protein structure, which subsequently means that they can affect enzymes as well. Now we know that the active site is the bonding location for the substrate, and is dependent upon the shape of the active site to fit properly to help catalyze the reaction. But if the structure of the protein, or the enzyme in this case, gets changed, it can affect its ability to function. Altering the active site in any way means the substrate will not be able to lock in properly, effectively rendering the enzyme useless. This process is referred to as denaturation, and the enzyme in this case we can say is denatured. The two main ways this can happen is by a change in temperature or pH to the external environment. 
In either case, if temperature increases enough or if pH changes enough, the tertiary structure of the protein can be altered, causing changes within the enzyme as a whole. With the substrate not able to bind, the reaction cannot be catalyzed. Enzymes work to catalyze reactions, and the speed at which they do this can be measured as enzyme activity. But this enzyme activity, or rate at which all of the enzymes that support a specific reaction can work, can be affected by a few things. Let's say we have this example of five of the same substrates and 10 of the same enzymes, all of which can catalyze the reaction of this particular substrate. And right now the total rate of enzyme activity is, let's say, about half of an arbitrary maximum value. So things are working well, but they could be more efficient. Now if the temperature of the system were to change, let's say it increases, the molecules within the system will start to move faster. This will increase the speed of the substrates and the enzymes and allow more of an opportunity for them to interact, ultimately increasing the enzyme activity. But this will only increase to an extent because we know that if the temperature gets too hot, the enzyme can start to denature, rendering them useless, resulting in a decrease in enzyme activity. Additionally, we can assume that if the temperature decreases, the molecules will have less kinetic energy and move slower, causing a decrease in enzyme activity. Next, we have changes in pH. What we need to know here is that enzymes are designed to work effectively within a specific pH range. So if you have enzymes designed to work in the stomach, which is a very acidic place, they will be highly effective in a low pH. Other places in the body would have enzymes more effective at a neutral pH. Now the idea here is that a shift from the optimal pH for any enzyme can change its solubility and overall shape effectively denaturing it. Not being able to bond to the active site means the enzyme activity will decrease. And this goes for both an increase and decrease in pH from the optimal peak of enzyme activity. Lastly, we have substrate concentration. In this example so far, we have been operating with about five substrates per five seconds of time with 10 total enzymes. If we were to increase the amount of substrates we have to 10, we would effectively double the rate of enzyme activity because we would be utilizing all of our enzymes at any given moment. So increasing the substrate concentration can greatly increase the overall rate of the enzyme activity, but only to a maximum point. If we were to add five more substrates per five seconds to this example, we can see that the substrates now outnumber the available enzymes. With every enzyme being used, the rate of activity will stagnate because of the limiting factor. So the graph is best drawn like this. With all of this information about enzymes that humans have acquired, we have actually done some pretty cool things within the industrial sector to make a great use out of enzymes. We do this through a process called enzyme immobilization. The idea behind this is being able to stick enzymes in a place where they cannot move, meaning they are immobilized, and then run substrates through them to help carry out the desired chemical reaction, and then simply collect the products for our own benefit. We can see this in the process of developing lactose-free milk. To make this happen, they take a bunch of enzymes called lactase and immobilize them into beads and place them into a specially designed container. Now, the reality of what happens here is more complex, but the simple version is that the milk with lactose in it, which is a disaccharide sugar molecule, is sent through the bead mesh. As the lactose interacts with the lactase enzymes, the enzymes lower the activation energy for the sugars to be split, resulting in the breaking of the chemical bond. Out of the other end of the container will then be milk with separate monosaccharides consisting of glucose and galactose. This means that lactose is no longer present, and people who have a hard time breaking down that disaccharide can easily consume this product because the sugars are already broken down for them. This is just one example of the many ways enzymes can be used in industry. Pretty cool.